mean to say it's going to happen again. Um, everything's a miracle in this sense. Everything is a sort of coincidence. Um, for Hugh, as he says, events are loose and unconnected. Um, it's only our minds that, through habit of mind, um, creates these sort of patterns. Um, his view on causation is everything is a miracle. So every time we throw a pebble into a pond and it causes, as we see it, ripples, this is a type of miracle. And the expectation that ripples will occur the next time we throw a pebble into a pond is just a habit of mind. It's just laziness. It's just not thinking carefully. It's not, or rather, it's uh, not being open to the purely provisional nature of perception, uh, which means you don't see clearly. So, um, we only regard the waves coming out from the pebble as non-miraculous, because we'd just be exhausted if we had to think like that in everyday life. There's a fantastic book, which we'll come to, by uh, the psychiatrist, Oliver Sacks called The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. And it's about a patient who had some terrible brain injury where he had no short term memory at all. So this patient was like Hugh. Everything he saw, he saw for the first time. Uh, and this poor man lived with his wife and he would see his wife and say hello to her and then immediately forget who she was and have to be reintroduced to her all the time. It's just like a form of hell. But that was a man who would never make the error of induction, that's for sure. His mind had been damaged in such a way that the assumption that we all carry around that helps us cope with day-to-day -day life was gone. And he saw everything as a miracle, everything as it is. If you, you know, if you remove that internal mental view of this, you just see everything fresh every time it happens. There's no causality there at all. Now, if you did that, you wouldn't be able to function in life. So we, that's right. Every time we see a, um, throw a pebble into a pond, ripples come out, we, say, we don't say, wow, how did that happen? Because the person standing next to us say, well, it does, you know, it just does. It just, you know, we've done it thousands of times and you would be, quickly classified as a barking mad, although you would not be mad, you'd be very, very wise. Um, so that's, that's it. I'm oh, sorry, um, almost it. The last thing in chapter 10 on, on miracles uh, is Hume's law of miracles, also very, very useful for journalists. And what he says there, I haven't got the exact quote in front of me, it's along the lines of when somebody tells you they've seen a miracle, what you've got to do is balance uh, how plausible that miracle is against how likely the person that's telling you about the miracle or describing the miracle is a fool or a knave. How, you know, so you've got a balancing act to do. So if somebody comes and tells you, I've just seen a sort of miracle, when you throw a pebble in a pond, it causes all these amazing ripples. It's quite reasonable to believe that, even if you've never seen the ripple stuff yourself, and even if you're like the man who mistook his wife for a hat. It's quite reasonable, because, you know, what's in it for the person who's telling you? Is he a fool or is he a, a knave? You know, why would a foolish people get, even a fool, get it wrong about describing these ripples? Why would a knave, in other words, a crook, do it. What's in it for them? On the other hand, if somebody tells you if you eat this type of orange on a Thursday uh, and they're trying to sell it to you for a thousand pounds as a miracle, it'll cure all your acne and give you eternal life because it's like a miraculous orange. Then using Hume's law, you think, well, this guy's a knave or a fool. So, you know, Hume's law on miracles, absolutely brilliant. Live your life by it. Live, you know, keep it in mind all the time. So that's uh, my thoughts on David Hume, the last and greatest of the empiricists, the man who mistook his 
wife for a hat, the person who attempts to see everything fresh with no presupp uh, no presuppositions at all. Quick way to remember the salient point about David Hume, a little saying that I've just thought of. David Hume, don't assume. <laughs>